guests who absolutely rushed through recording only to discover she wasn't in as much of a rush. So I'm re-recording because the video was me like, oh my God, I have no time. However, I still have to get this done in about 20 minutes. I kind of like that I can maybe breathe and do it properly. So first off, let's do the usual introductions. Um, my name is Caroline. I am a knitter based in Scotland where I live with my partner, Ben, and my dog, Fela, who is watching the postman. I'm originally from Denmark, but I've lived in Scotland for more than nine years now. And I've knitted for more than three, um, which is kind of mad. I started podcasting in my first year of knitting. So despite having been not the most consistent podcaster in the past few months, um, if you want to, there's actually, you can basically see my whole knitting journey here on YouTube. Um, I'm going to start out with the sort of traditional format and um, talk about what I'm wearing. I am wearing the Elizabeth blouse by Petite Knit. Um, I showed this as a finished object in my last episode, but um, it is freshly blocked because I must have worn it a day where it wasn't cold enough to wear such a thick sweater and it needed blocked again. Um, I just really like it. I just, honestly, I like the style of this so much. Um, I'm kind of tempted to, when I've knit it through a bit more of my stash, I would love to knit this in black and white. I think that would just be chef's kiss for like, um, sort of office wear or casual wear to wear with jeans, that kind of thing. And I would say, as I said last time, I don't actually think this pattern is as difficult as it looks. Are you not a bit intense? Could you come lie down, please? Fela, come on, lie down. So yeah, really, really happy with it. It's not massive. I could definitely have knitted a bigger size, um, but I think for this yarn combination that is quite feminine, I actually kind of like it looks a bit more fitted. Sleeves are, however, maybe a teensy wee bit short. Like when my arms are straight, it's not too, too bad. But then as I start to move, it is a little bit short, but that's okay. Sometimes it's nice to not have sleeves that get in the way. My only finished object from last time is a pair of socks. Uh, these are the Morrison socks. Um, knitted it in yarn I've spoken about a million times. Um, essentially, it's um, mohair sheep that lives in mohair sheep. It's an Angora sheep that makes mohair that lives in, uh, in Scotland mixed with some Shetland wool. And I held that with a strand of Drops Kit Silk in a matching shade for these. Um, and the Morrison socks I've already made in this yarn before. Um, so this is actually my second pair um, and I spoke a lot more about it in the last episode so I won't go on further besides to say I did lose the yarn chicken um, so basically at the very very tail end I ran out of the red main colour so I used a little bit of Peruvian Highland wool that I had left over in this kind of reddish colour and used that for the toe. I spoke about it last time that I thought I would and I did and yes it's not Obviously, it would have been better if I'd done it on both or like planned it better. But these are a pair of socks I'll wear for comfort. And yeah, I'm fine with that. I haven't yet worn them. And I don't know if it's because they just feel so Christmassy in one, on the one hand. So I'm kind of wanting to like, I've kind of been waiting for autumn to arrive, which it fully has now in Scotland. Um, but also, I may be waiting a little bit for Christmas. Um, we're going back to Denmark for Christmas and I'm really, really excited. Um, it's Ben's first Danish Christmas. Um, but I kind of maybe want to save them to like go back and enjoy a Danish Christmas. So that's my one finished object. I am fairly certain I showed this last time. I am going to rush through things a little bit today. I just wanted to get an episode out because I'm conscious that soon it was going to be that thing where like it'd been several months <laughs> and I hadn't been back. Um, but I don't really think there's that much to update you on today somehow. Um, I'm quickly going to talk about this project bag, which I can't remember if I've talked about, but if I haven't, it does, even if I have, sorry, it does bear repeating because it's excellent. This is, um, I bought this in Thailand actually when we were on honeymoon. It's from a brand called Mushy Mushy and I have a few sort of like, I have, I bought this and then I bought a project bag that's kind of like the small size and I bought one size up um these have little cute people on them uh people little cute animals on them um they have loads of really cute designs um and I when I looked when I came back you can buy it online and it's very 
very nice. I could definitely spend a fortune there. Um, but this is an excellent project bag for a big project. As you can tell, it kind of has the ability to be like cinched in and it also has an internal pocket, um, which I love. My sort of like big whip is the one I've been mainly working on since last time is this. Um, it's my jacket number one from my favourite things knitwear, knit in one strand of Fulcolana Peruvian Highland wool and one strand um, Fulcolana Telia, which is then way hair. It is in the colour, the Peruvian Highland wool I'm fairly certain is nougat and the per yeah, Peruvian Highland wool is nougat and the Telia is light truffle, I think, um, which creates this a very cool toned brown and I don't know. I still don't know how I feel about this colour. Um, since last time I had um, a bit of colour done to my hair. You might notice um, my much lighter front bits. Um, I also had some sort of like, I guess it's more of a copper um, put through the sort of like main bits of my hair together with um, some bleach. Um, and I'm just about to have it redone. So currently it's actually the least amount of red it's looked, especially because while I was sick with the flu, which is why I haven't been back sooner, um, I washed it with a shampoo that I think really stripped the red, like it wasn't really colour safe, but it's kind of past caring about my hair when I was ill. Um, and I think it's faded it a little bit more, but yeah, I do like it, but it does mean that my hair has always been a very warm blonde, but I think it's even warmer now, especially with the red through it, but maybe it'll be nice. I'm kind of, I always find when I edit this, it's sometimes easier to see like when you hold something up while you're talking, kind of how it goes. So far I've finished the body. Um, I do love that on like like textured cardigan like this or when I did the waffle sweater. As much as the body still takes forever, it's more interesting than like stockinette stitch. I do think there's a stockinette stitch cardigan on my horizon. I haven't decided what or with what yarn or anything just yet, but I think it's on the horizon. Um, but I did finish that um, mainly because um, this was my first double knit button band. This um, this blouse was actually the first time I'd done double knitting like that. And I I just wasn't sure how much yarn I should expect a button band to take or like use, not take, how much button band, like how much yarn I needed for the button band basically. And it used a lot less than I kind of anticipated, which is good. But I wanted to do that first just so that I didn't have that like hanging over me when I'm working the sleeves. Um, as you can tell, I don't think the bottom man lies that neatly just yet. One thing, like one thing that always helps that is obviously blocking. But another issue I think is that my gauge isn't just right. Now, if this had been a stockinette cardigan, I think it would have been worth me re-swatching and like really figuring out my double knit gauge. However, I knew I know from when I knitted the sweat sweater version of this that this texture really, really gross like it really grows in the wash and even if it doesn't grow you can like this is near in a hard tug and you could easily block it like we're talking many many centimeters longer and I find that when I, I gently make the the sort of texture of the body longer suddenly the knit back like the double knit but, um, button band lies really neat and and flat so I basically kind of want to wait until I've blocked it and if it's completely terrible I will re like rethink it then I think I have a lot of leeway to get it to look quite neat just with an aggressive block um and I am kind of excited for it to grow because it's kind of now at the like awkward stage a little bit um I started picking up for the sleeves yesterday got got it completely wrong um so I will restart my picking up tonight it's one of those that it's like approximately for the pickup frequency. I'm probably just going to do something rogue, make sure I end up on an even number and then kind of go with that. Because um, I don't really think it matters. Like if I don't think it, the sleeve is decreasing enough or if the shape is right, I don't mind kind of readjusting that as I knit. Um, I hate picking up sleeves. That's my main gripe with um, drop shoulder. So that's the sort of like, state of it or stage I'm at and um, I hope well I don't really plan to be back until this is done I'm going to Hive Knits or Lissy's wedding um, not this weekend but next weekend and I am 100% hoping that 
hoping this will be done and planning like working towards actively towards that so my two of the whips on hold because i think this will be perfect i'm driving down to manchester area which is about four hours from where i live so it's quite a long drive and i'm doing it on my own i just reckon like just snuggled up in this or like when you're hung over after the wedding i think that would be perfect so this is my sort of active whip i would love to know what buttons you'd put with this i originally cast this on for a different cardigan that I ended up not liking. Um, so I ripped that out and obviously I restarted it for this instead. And for that, I bought these like brown buttons. Um, I haven't pulled them out, which I probably should have, bad podcaster. But they're basically brown with like gold detailing and they're nice. But I don't know if I still think they're the right choice. I'd kind of been thinking maybe I should go for black or I've seen some have like a greyish um undertone tool to shell and i think that can be quite nice but let me know what kind of buttons would you put with this i fully envision this to be worn with literally the same as i do with the waffle cardigan with like a black top underneath maybe work trousers for work or jeans on the weekend like kind of something that can do a bit of everything that's very much been the kind of knits i've been drawn to this year this is another one of those that like i've worn dressed up for work but you could also wear it, you know, dressed down on the weekend. Um, so yeah, I'd kind of love to know what buttons you put on. Maybe I was have glittery buttons and stuff, but I just think because of the all over texture, I think I actually think you want buttons that are too domineering. Um, so yeah, let me know. So that's been my sort of main whip. My next whip, which I'm fairly certain I spoke about this last time. So I'm going to just quickly show it also because it isn't that interesting this is the hipster hat by petite knit it is a two uh two times two ribbing um hat and yeah this is kind of it i'm using two strands of some uh, yarn left over from my stash um hand dyed by botanical yarns um it's called amazing gray she doesn't sell it anymore but um i quite like the color it's like a greyish purple with speckles of orange and purple throughout. Um, I used this for my early morning sweater earlier this year and I think I'll have loads left over. Um, I, have, um, I have two balls on the go because it's an alpaca silk cashmere blend and the yarn cakes just tend to unravel themselves so yeah. <laughs> I'm using two I will say though, and this is my next question, so I've asked about the buttons, then the next thing is, this is the hat on. Now, I have a fairly small head. Um, if you are Dane, you might know when we finished high school, you wear like those, like a specific kind of hat um, called a studenahu. And my head was tiny for that, much smaller than I kind of expected. Across my cohort, I don't know, we were not strict on like whoever's the smallest has to buy beers for everyone, but I was probably in the running for having to do that because I had quite a small head and I find my biggest like gripe with hats is that um I hate loose hats and especially hats for me isn't something I wear kind of casually like I wouldn't just like put on a hat to be like cool I wear hats for utility right this I plan to wear when we are out with the dog um and it's just that it's you know looks nice um because my other hat that i knitted a long time ago is a little bit on the big side so i'm hoping this will be a bit more snug but i can't decide if the children's size which is why i cast on because when i looked at the measurement i'm basically at the very upper end of children and at the very tail end like tail, well, very beginning of women's and so I decided I'd rather it was a little bit snug. And since I didn't swatch, obviously I don't know what the gauge actually is. It probably isn't on, like it probably isn't on point. And now I can't decide if it's a little bit too tight. Wearing it just now, it's tight, but it's not like unbearable. How much do we think double ribbing will give? Like I think even just sitting here with it on, probably looking absolutely mental, I already think it feels more comfortable. But do we think it's one of those that, especially with taking the yarn blend into consideration, we all think it will grow quite a lot, right? Like that it will give, especially when finished and blocked and relaxed. So that's kind of also why it's gone on hold because I kind of wanted other people's opinion on whether we think it is going to grow. My final whip 
is um, a Lyulu shawl by um, Sari Nordlin, um, which is this all over cabled shawl. Um, if you're using the recommended yarn, which is, I think she recommends knitting for olive merino in a soft silk mohair, you only need a ball of each. Um, but I am knitting it in um, Cardiff Cashmere Classic, um, which is, I think they call this double knitting. I don't know if I think it's quite thick enough for double knitting, um, but regardless, this, uh, it, it does have, you know, it's not too thick to be used for this, I think, or too thin. Um, it, it looks quite nice. I picked it because it's what a lot of the testers used. I will say that I think it looks less, um, like it's textured, but I think when you see it in the original yarns, it tends to be, be a bit more plump than this has turned out. However, who's going to complain about having a shawl in 100% cashmere? I think it's going to be the absolute dream. Um, I should mention that this yarn was kindly gifted by Simona from Knit when she very, very first started selling Cardiff Cashmere, which is uh, an embarrassingly long time ago. <laughs> and I just haven't knitted it up and um, I felt kind of guilty. I have a few yarns in my stash that I was gifted and I feel like it's time for me to work through them. Um, yeah. Um, and this, especially because this is just such a beautiful yarn and it, um, just, just over half, like just finished the like part where you start increasing to now you start decreasing. And what I will say, um, is that, or what I will say, what I do think is that it will have like quite a nice length. If I had another ball of yarn, I probably would have done another repeat. And if I could do it over, I would probably have done that. But since it's been that long, I was like, you know, it's not cheap yarn and I was like I don't really need another ball you live you learn but I do think it'll have like a cute like just tied once around your neck almost like a stewardess style that's kind of what I want from this and I think it'll be really good especially in my office I find um I work at a university and the temperature changes so much like our office can sometimes be roasting but then you go to like a teaching room that's freezing or it's the other way around and um, I just find, especially when I'm at work, I have such little control over the temperature of my environment that I think something like this will be perfect. So I'm excited to show you when it's done. Um, I will say, if you have been thinking about knitting it and been nervous, it's really difficult. If you are good enough at reading a chart, I haven't found it bad at all. The repeat gets repetitive quickly enough that I actually think, I don't know it off by heart, I'm not good enough for that but you can you can read the knitting really easily and because it repeats and isn't like unique for each line it's not too bad I do think I have to get used to Sari Nordland's way of writing patterns they are very yeah I'm not sure they were completely the type of pattern I'm used to but then I knit a lot from from Scandi designers and I know Finnish patterns can be quite different than, than Scandi and that's basically all the projects that I have cast on once um, jacket number one is done. I thought I'd show you what my next, or well, talk about my next cast on, which I plan to be a Celeste sweater by Petite Knit. Now I have dug around in my stash and you're going to hear some rustling now. I basically dug around in my stash and I found or remembered, at first I was going to buy yarn to go with this and then I kind of realised that I had enough of my stash for the other colours. So um, I plan for my main colour to be this, which is um, Vilkalana Proven Highland Wool in the colour Cinnamon on the Petite Knit Facebook group, which is mainly in Scandinavian languages. I never see English posts on there, um, but for the Scandinavian, um, but what I've seen for the, from the other Scandies that are currently knitting it, this is obviously the, the sweater everyone's knitting. Um, I've seen a lot of people recommend Vilkalana Proven Highland Wool and seen a few versions in it and I really like the look of it. This colour, I like it, but it's not a colour I would pick for, like, to be on its own. It's melange, which is kind of Phil Colana's way to say it's, like, kind of blended of a few different colours. Um, but compared to some of the other ones, I find that this has quite a stark... Like, it's quite a stark melange. Like, 
even if you compare it to like a grey like this, I just feel like this is quite stark and the original project I, I bought it for never worked out. So it's been in my stash forever and I have so much of it and I really want to get it out. And I actually think that in a colour work sweater, this will be a beautiful base colour. So I found a few other shades. I know for certain um, that I'm going to use these. Um, so that uh, there's two more Colada shades and then there's two um, balls of uh, Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino, um, both of which are, they were sponsored when I did test knits. Um, so this is um, Heavy Merino in uh, Nord, in Nordstrand, in, what do they call that? In Nordic Beach, don't they? Yeah. And um, Knitting for Olive in the grey, which is stone grey. And I don't, Mm, this is called Dawn something and this one is like charcoal-ish. It's like a very bluish grey. Um, that one was gifted by Simona, um, but this one I bought with my own money and I bought this with my own money. Just for transparency, so I know those are my kind of colour palette. Now, I need to decide what I want the final strand to be. I know that I basically plan to finish jacket number one first. And when I finish that, um, if there was any Fulcolana Peruvian Highland wool left from there, that could go in there. But it is a lot of browns. And when I've kind of put it together, I just think it'll be maybe a little bit boring. And I kind of want to bring in some colour. And again, I want this, if at all possible, to be a fully stash busting project. So I kind of found two options that could potentially work. But I have no more DK weight yarn that I think would really go. I do have carp, carp, um, Lang Yarns Carpidium, but that's quite thick. I wonder if that's, I think that's too thick to be knitted out gauge. So one is this Knitting for Olive Yarn, which was also gifted for Testnet ages ago. It's been a long time since I had yarn gifted, but I still, you know, often when you're sponsored, you get an extra ball. And it kind of builds up over time. This is yarn uh, given to me by my gran from her stash, and it's essentially uh, Hilhol Ulspenneri's Kelsul, but in before it kind of come, became Hellhold. Um, so it's um yeah, it's quite old. Um but still lovely and I really like this green colour. I do like the blue, but I do think the blue is maybe a bit samey with that, whereas I feel like the green would be quite a nice earthy pop. However, this is my final question of the day. We've had the buttons, we've had the will the hat grow, or do you think I should start over? My final question is if you were to hold these yarns, I have enough to hold, like usually I would say that fingering weight plus fingering weight gives DK weight. However, when I look at that in comparison to the Phil Kalana, I think it looks a bit too thin with just two strands. It just does not look the same thickness. Would I be crazy if I held three strands of this? I know it comes down to gauge swatching, but I hate gauge swatching. And I just want to know if I'm completely mental for thinking about it. I will probably swatch because I should um, but my my colour work knitting isn't great and I think especially on a small small swatch it's hard for it to be accurate so let me know what you think. I'm just going to put that away for now um, and quickly finish off. I have exactly two minutes to go before I have to be at my next meeting and um, there isn't really much to update you on so I guess it's a good thing I kind of managed everything and I think as much as I think this will feel rushed when I edit it, it's a lot less rushed than the first one, which was next level. That was just me talking about this. Blah, blah, blah. Made no sense. Um, I don't have any interesting acquisitions. I do have, I got something sponsored from Clover, which was very exciting, but I've shown that on Instagram. So I'm going to spare that for time when I have more time to talk about it and have more thoughts and feelings on it. Um, in my personal life, I've been working. Just went back to CrossFit after being off sick with the flu for almost two weeks. Completely floored me. First I had a fever, then I got really, really bad vertigo. And that drove me bonkers because you feel fine when you're lying down. And then as soon as you get up, it's like the whole world is spinning. And I have never been so excited to get back to the gym. I am quite sore today, um, but really good to be back. And then I've been spending a lot of time with Fela. Um, we've been going to Hoopers as usual. Um, 
maybe alongside while I'm talking I'll put in a video of her training um, this week because I was so proud of her I thought she did incredible um, so I really really enjoy that and um, she brings so much good to my life and she was very sweet when I was off sick she kind of just like cuddled in and um, with her one walk a day she was happy to stay in bed for the rest of the day and um, we had family visiting which was lovely I had my two cousins visiting um, one's nine and the other one turns three in December so they're both young children and obviously Fela isn't used to children and she was amazing with them um, so that was really nice and I guess um, what I really want to say is that I always give a mental health update as well and I actually feel really good so there isn't much to say I feel like there's always things you can improve but I'm starting to feel really well balanced and it's actually really nice and I am very excited to show you more knitting next time I come back because winter's here I'm ready to knit all winter um so finally I just want to say thank you so so much for joining me and I'll see you soon bye